Harry Potter Wizards Unite started its worldwide release a couple of days ago, and when you first log on, you might be a little confused on exactly what you're supposed to do. Well, today I'm going to show you the first five things that you need to know when you start playing. Welcome to the Magical Task Force. So one of the first things you'll notice when you log into the game are those little things right there on the ground. Now, those are ingredients. You need those ingredients in order to brew potions, which you can do, I believe, at level five. Um, I'll get more into potions in a later video. They help you either in combat or they help uh, make a foundable be able to uh, be catched easier. And uh, all you have to do is just click them like that and you automatically have them. Now, some are rarer than others. Um, there are also seeds and vaults. Now, those are specifically for greenhouses, and uh, I'll get into those in just a little bit as well. See, there's another one popped up right there. Very easy to get. First thing you definitely want to do when you start playing the game. So just by walking around in any park, or pretty much almost out down any street you can find foundables. Those are those little circle medallions that are all around you that spawn. Now, they do belong to different categories. You can find those categories in the registry, which I'll go over again later in another video. But I did want to point out that some of them have that gold line, yellow line, if you will, above them. That means that they are actually rarer ones than others. So I'm going to click on that one real quick if I can grab it. We'll actually see what it is oh this wasn't the one so we'll go back i don't think i have this one though but i'll still actually i'll try this one because i don't believe i have it yet now in order to actually get a foundable to go back you need to trace the actual line for the spell that is in front of you. If you notice down on the left hand corner, I have my energy count. Now energy goes away, it does not replenish over time. You have to visit an inn or spend in-game gold in order to get it. Now I want you to pay attention to the bar at the top. That is very similar if you ever played Pokemon Go to excellent, nice, and great throw. Um, with it being, I believe, fair, good, great, and magnificent is that small little one at the top. Now, as soon as I touch that blue dot in the center to start casting, that bar is going to go down. So not only do you need to trace the line pretty as close as you can, you also need to do it as quick as you can because it will give you a bonus. So here, let me, let me show you real quick. And uh, just so you know, I, I use my finger. I tried using my thumb, but it didn't actually work as well. So I like to find a flat surface, put the phone down if I can, and actually use my finger to trace it. Now watch that top bar as I try to actually cast this spell. See, it automatically started moving down. The bar didn't go anywhere because, uh, well, I, I didn't trace it all that well. Up, oh, we'll try it one more time. Oh, it actually went down. I traced that really bad. Oh, and see, I'm glad it did that actually. If you don't get the foundable, you don't you aren't able to return it it disappears now don't think that you missed it or anything like that they do spawn again you can try to get them again there are some that you need to find multiple times in order to complete them and put them in your registry now i'll click on this one like i was trying to before uh, and it's a hippogriff that is inside of some ice now as you can see this is a really high threat level so that means that that bar is going to disappear really quick as soon as I actually touch that blue dot. All right, here we go. Oh, wow, yeah, and to see it even, you have to be, not like I said, not only quick, but you also have to have pretty good tracing ability to get it. As you level up and get a higher level wizard or witch, you will be able to do those more efficiently. Um, again, similar to Pokemon Go, as you caught a certain number of a certain type, it became easier to catch that same type. Now I want to talk for a second about greenhouses and inns. We'll go over greenhouses first. Uh, greenhouses are those little blue buildings that you see right there. I'll click on one real quick automatically takes you up to this screen where you get to pick one now you have to click it and pull up and it will give you energy it will give you some sort of ingredient it all depends it's really random now what's cool though is that you can go over here and click the growing at the bottom right hand corner see that and then you click grow 
and it gives you all of the seed packets and the water canisters that you've actually collected. Now those are the same thing as the regular items. You can find them anywhere that you're walking around, whether it's in a neighborhood, a park, or what have you. And so they each have an individual, uh, how long they take. You can see the top one is seven hours, one hour, one day. So we're actually gonna, let's try the, the leaping toadstool, the one day. So we're gonna put that in there. And then what you can do is you can contribute. Now, contributing actually uses your energy in order to pretty much try to give you more of what you're going to get. So we'll put that right at two. And then same thing as like you're trying to cast a spell. Put it on the blue dot and trace it. And then what it does is it boosts the actual thing you're trying to grow. It's pretty awesome. Now, let's talk about ends. Ends are these pink buildings that you see all around you. We're gonna click on one of those real quick. And what it does is it actually gives you five different options. Now it picks one of those at random. You don't really get to pick it. You just have to cast the spell and one of them will pop up and give you energy. That is your main source of being able to get energy are these ends. Now I've seen everything from 23 energy to three energy. So it's really random and varies exactly what you're going to get from each one. But if you find yourself a nice good park like this right here, there are multiple ends that you can hit. And see like this one gave us, this one gave us three, like I was saying. So, so yeah, it all varies depending on what it is. Now I do wanna bring this up though first. Um, in case anybody accidentally buys one or if you end up with one. Dark detectors are very similar to lures from Pokemon Go. And what they do is they actually bring up rarer spawns. So if you want to actually hang out at a park or something like that for some reason, you can put one of those on your uh, ends and it will make rarer foundables actually spawn. But as you can see, just walking around just a little bit, they spawn all over the place. Same thing with items, they're all over the place. Now, I do wanna point out, you see how that one uh, greenhouse and the other greenhouse on that side have a green light coming above them? Well, that means that there's something growing in there. That means that somebody put some sort of plant or ingredient in one of the pots like I showed you and it's taking a certain amount of time in order to grow them. Anybody can actually contribute to um, something that's growing in a greenhouse. That's what's really awesome and as far as I'm aware I believe once the actual thing finishes growing anyone that is around at the time for however long it lasts can actually get the ingredient from the greenhouse which is really cool and I would imagine that some of the rarer ingredients that you would need for potions are definitely going to either be greenhouse exclusive or make it easier to where the greenhouse is the way that you're going to be able to get them the easiest way. Now one thing I do want to show you all also is you see how all of the foundables have a different color, different shape. Those all belong to different parts of the registry. Now, if I click on this real quick and I'll just show you, I don't have a lot, but at the top you see Care of Magical Creatures. The next one is Dark Arts and it keeps going. Legends of Hogwarts, Magizoology. Ooh, that's a hard one. Wonders of the Wizarding World. Now, each one of those are the different categories, I guess you could call them, of the registry. And each one of them correspond to what exactly is on there. So, for example, if I click this, it's going to give me a curiosity, I believe. Trace that backwards, that didn't work. You see though how I traced it closer and that actually went up? That's what I was talking about earlier. But even though, see, even though that was a really good cast, it still went away. So like I said, if it actually goes away, don't feel bad that it goes away. I mean, there is nothing really you can do. Oh, that was a wonder of the wizarding world. That's what that one was. But yeah, see like the yellow one right here? 
We'll go up here. We'll go back to the registry. Oh, that's profession. We're not going to do that. Boom. Magical games and sports. So if I go back and I click on that one, it's going to be something from magical games and sports. All right. So what is this? I don't think I have this one yet. It's a very low probability of uh, a low threat level. So I should be able to get this one. Let's give it a shot real quick. Oh, look at that. And if the, if the spiral starts getting bigger, then that usually means that you've gotten the foundable, you found it, and it disappears as soon as you've done it, you returned it. Congratulations to everyone. It goes through this. Again, it tells you how many fragments you have already, how many fragments you need in order to actually find it completely. It goes through experience that you get personally, experience that you get for the different uh, category in the registry. And then, if you actually don't have it like i don't have her boom you just have to click it once and it's added to your registry and that's how you get new things added now the cool thing too is that every time you catch or i don't want to say catch something but every time that you actually send something back if you have the uh, the token already like let's say i click on something and it's her again i still get points towards magical games and sports even though I already have her now it gives you extra bonus points if you don't have it so of course you want to try to find the ones that you don't have but if you have it and you're just trying to level that up it's definitely worth it because what happens is you end up getting runes now runes if I go over here to my vault real quick I can show you these are what allow you to go into fortresses now, I'm not gonna get hardcore into fortresses. That's gonna be, a need, that needs to be its own video by itself. But this determines the difficulty of the fortress. Now, I'll, I'll walk over here to one real quick, click on it and show you exactly how that would work and how you could start that. Last thing I wanna talk about are fortresses. Fortresses are those tall buildings you see that just tower over everything else all around them. They're going to be very similar to raids like you would have in Pokemon Go. Now here, if I click on one, you see it has a ton of different levels. Some of them require you to be higher level. Some of them require uh, multiple people. Uh, the only ones you can really do by yourself, solo, one person, are, I believe, level one and level two. Everything above that at least requires two people. Now, this is what I was talking about before about the runes. Now, you see how each of the runes has its own number, and each of the runes also has its own category just like the registry well the thing is is that up to five people can actually be in a fortress at one time now depending on what level rune you use it depends on what level and how hard the fortress is actually going to be so that means if someone uses a level five and you use a level one it's going to be a level six now the cool thing is though is that each individual person themselves actually fights in the fortress you'll never see two versus one it will always be one on one so when you do a fortress especially the higher level ones you want to make sure you know who you're supposed to fight now without going into too much about it because like i said i'm going to make an entire video on fortresses itself the thing you need to also keep in mind is that not everyone has to be fighting now, depending on what profession you are, and again, professions will be included in the Fortress video, you might not want to be inside fighting. You might want to be outside healing or buffing, or if somebody needs to jump out real quick, you can jump in and take their spot. Fortresses are very unique, and it's a very, very fun addition, I want to say, to this game, because every one of them will be different you might get the same creature that you fought before but depending on who is in your group and what profession they are will dictate exactly how if or when you're going to be able to beat it and the whole idea of it being individualized but a group effort as well i think is is brilliant now i'm going to do a low level fortress right now by myself solo if you're solo, it's only, I believe, like an eight second countdown. If there's multiple people, you have 30 seconds before the window will close. 
Now, what you need to do is I have to defeat two foes in order to win. So I'm going to pick this guy first, and I'm going to start it. Let's turn AR off because it would be way easier. We'll do AR later. Now, you got to get inside of that circle, and then just like you're trying to cast something, trace the signal out. Now, in order to defend yourself, it's the same way. Just pull it and hold your finger down on the phone, and it will actually, it won't stop, it won't like negate the damage, but it will at least make it to where you don't take full damage. And it gives you that shot every single time you go to try to fight something. And you have to get that little blue dot inside of that hole or else it will not work at all. So I just defeated the first one. And then we're coming up right here. We got a second one. It's a level three, a one star, if you will. All right. That thing looks mean. So put the little circle in the dot. Boom, trace the spell out. Do some damage. Defend myself. The thing's doing no damage. Look at that. Like I said, level one, level twos, you can totally do by yourself. Um, the game itself actually forces you to have more people for higher level ones. So that is a big difference from Pokemon Go, where Pokemon Go, if you were going to be doing a raid, you could potentially do the raid by yourself regardless of whatever level it is. This will not even let you start the actual raid. Go into it by yourself. Higher level fours. Because like I was saying before, each uh, fortress has, I believe, 20 floors in it. So these things will take some time to actually explore, if you will. And every floor that you go up, it gives you more time. And so see challenges, rank one, boom. I just went up rank, that's awesome. Runes, I got a bonus uh, chamber one room. See, I got some extra points for magical care of creatures because that was the rune that I used. And then I got some physical XP for myself. So if you look right there, I got some uh, I got some little tiny, what is it? Unforgiving the future. And I got one shard from a winged horse. So that was a fun little fortress right there. And the cool thing is, is that I can go back and you can do it over again if you want. Tons of fun. And we got a rare right here. So let's check out this rare oh uh-oh it's high level what are we gonna do now the game does give you some of these and i'll use one of them just to show you these right here improve if it's going to actually help you or not to actually get this done i'm going to use the smaller one first and then trace it out now those you can brew yourself, or those you can uh, you can get as you level up. But oh wow! And see, because of me using that potion, it allowed me to do that way easier. You saw me fight some of the rarer ones earlier today, and it just did not work. And that's awesome. As you can see, you can tell it's a rare because I only have one out of the eight fragments. All of the rare ones you need multiple fragments. The common ones you can pretty much claim the first time you do them. And yeah, and since I don't have the eight full fragments, it won't let me add it to the registry. I have to get all eight before I can add it. So there are the five basic things you need to know about the new Harry Potter Wizards Unite game. I'll be releasing more videos shortly covering things like professions more in depth or the registry, things of that nature. Um, anything in particular you would like to see, leave a comment down in the comment section. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys next time.